located at the points of 62 degrees north by 10 degrees east and bordered by the North Sea in Finland and consisting of a population of 4,611,849 the land of Norway now has as its primary religious group a heavy population of Christians and Muslims among its many ethnicities these native Norwegians include about 60,000 Sami, Europeans, and other ethnic groups. But who are the true natives of Norway? Was Christianity and Muslim always the religion they practiced? And if not, is there any proof that suggests that maybe another religion has survived to this day? From an archaeological standpoint, it can be seen that the people of Norway first appeared about 10,000 years ago when Scandinavian ice sheets retreated and that the oldest proof of settlement can be found in the southeast area of Osfold, located close to Sweden. Except for ancestors passing through Osfold, no general agreement exists as to where present-day Norwegians come from. Graves have been excavated, but these can only be dated to Roman age, 0 to 400 AD, which shows connections to civilized countries in the south. No written sources really exist, though it has been found that around 800 AD there came about the end of the prehistoric age and the beginnings of the Viking Age, which lasted until about 1500 AD, and that these Vikings settled such areas as Dublin, Isle of Man, Iceland and Greenland, and were among the first to discover America due to their craftsmanship of longboats. But it should be noted that by 11th century, Norway was primarily Christian and the religion that existed prior was either incorporated into it or lost to make way for the new religion being introduced. Before their conversion to Christianity, the people of Norway were polytheistic, Nordic and Germanic religion that was for all intents and purposes an oral religion until about the 11th to 13th century when a poet named Snorri Sturluson wrote it all down in the form of the Prosetta. Looking at the section titled Here Begins the Beguiling of Gilvi within the Prosetta, one can find what this religion taught about the creation of the world. As told in narrative form, it states, in the beginning there was Genungagap, the yawning void, which was Muspel. Genungagap faced the north and was filled with ice, but the southern portion was lighted by Muspelheim, and just as cold rose out of Niflheim, Muspelheim became hot, and when a breath of heat melted the rime, it created Emir, who was also known as Argolamir by the rime giants. One can read that when Emir slept, he sweat, and from that sweat, a man and a woman formed under his left hand, while from one of his feet a son was formed. This was the birth of the Rhine Giants, and for sustenance he drank from the udders of the cow Odumla, who had also come from the Rhine, and from her udders there ran four streams of milk. For nourishment, Odumla licked at the salty ice blocks. Reading further, it can be found that on the first day that she, the cow Odumla, licked the salty ice, a man's hair appeared out of the ice. By the third lick, the man Buri had finally been freed and had a son named Bor, who married Besla. From these two, three children were born, Odin, Vili, and Ve. At some point, these three slew Emir, whose blood drowned the rhyme giants, except Bergelmir, who escaped in a boat with his family. Later, from them, the rhyme giants would once again exist. This story then explains that the three, Odin, Vili, and Ve, that had slew Emir, took his body to the yawning void, and from it, created the earth, blood being the seas and water, the flesh being the land, his bones being the crags, his teeth were the gravel and stone, and his brain were the clouds, and from his skull, they created heaven and set a dwarf at each of the four corners from the glowing embers and sparks that lit Muspelheim they gave light to heaven and earth by setting into the yawning gap that which had been cast out and the earth that was created was ring shaped on the outer edge is the sea in which the giants reside while in the center they built the city of Midgard and for the creation of humans 
It is said that the sons of Bor were walking out one day and came upon two trees. From these they fashioned man, Asker, and woman, Embla. Odin, it is said, gave them spirit and life. Vili gave them wit and feeling, and from Ve, form, speech, hearing, and sight. And the city they gave the man and woman was called Asgard, which men called Troy. So why is it important to see the creation myth? To put it into perspective, it offers one a view on how the people native to Norway saw the beginning of the world, where they possibly came from, and why the world is as it is. But continuing with the subject of Odin and his three brothers, it needs to be explained that this was a polytheistic religion, and the reason why it was is that there were more than one god and goddess being worshipped. So who were these gods and goddesses? It is already known that three of them are Odin and his brothers, but who was Odin, and how do the others have any connection? Starting with Odin, whose name is said to be similar to fury or madness, he can be described as a deity of death, war, wisdom, sometimes magic, and poetry. Ruler of the Aesir, a younger branch of the gods and primarily war gods, he presided over the Einharger, the glorious dead brought to him by the Valkyries for his army in the time of Ragnarok. It was believed that he had the power to inspire berserk rage in warriors and that he inspired many activities in a devious manner. He was the most learned god and has conflicting negative and positive aspects, similar to the Indian god Shiva, often depicted as an old man with one eye, which he offered in trade for the wisdom in Mimir's well. His face is often hidden by a wide-brimmed hat or a hood. Like the god Mercury, Odin shares the day Wednesday, which in Old English would be Woden's Day. Among his many possessions, Odin is said to have two ravens that keep him informed of that which is happening in the nine worlds and the spear Gungnir. He is also known to have had many wives, among them Frigg. Staying on the subject of Frigg, in some translations she was known as Freya, shares a connection with Venus and from whom we get Friday. She was the goddess of fertility and love, the wife of Odin, and the mother of Balder. When her son Balder was troubled by dreams of his own death, which ties to the early death of the Egyptian god Osiris and Tammuz of Sumeria, she received a promise from everything except for the mistletoe, which she considered too insignificant to actually do any damage, that nothing would harm Balder. Because she did not receive any promise from the mistletoe, Loki tricked Balder's blind brother Hodor into throwing mistletoe at Balder, killing him on the spot. When Frigg tried to have her son released from hell, both the place and the name of Loki's daughter, and also where the Christians get the name of their place of damnation, she failed and her son would rule in high in hell until Ragnarok, when he and Hodor, who also was condemned to hell, would return, taking Odin's place after Ragnarok. Staying on the subject of Loki, in some translations he was known as Lopt. He was the trickster, thief, and often fire god of the Norse religion. He was the son of Farbauti and Laufi. He could shapeshift and as time went by grew more progressively evil. Because of his boredom, he often exposed the gods and goddesses to trouble, but often helped them out of the dilemmas he got them into. He often went on adventures with his good friend Thor, whom he often also landed in the hot water because of his tricks. Married twice, one of these wives was Angroda, with whom he fathered three children. Hel, a partly decomposing woman, who had the face and body of the living, and the thighs and legs of a corpse, and who was banished to the netherworld by Odin. Fenrir, the wolf that would slay Odin, was restrained by the fetter Gleipnir, and who bit the hand off, much to the amusement of the other deities of Tyr and Jormungard, the mighty sea serpent that would be the death of Thor at Ragnarok. In the end, to control him, Loki was bound with the intestines of Narvi, one of two sons from his marriage to his second wife Sigyn, inside a cave under a snake dripping venom. He would remain until the coming of Ragnarok, when he would lead the armies of evil against the gods and goddesses. 
Another god was Thor, the Norse deity who has connections with Jupiter, and the Hindu god Indra, and from whom we get Thursday. He was the son of Odin and Fjorgen, a goddess of the earth, often depicted as being strong, energetic, having a huge appetite, and carrying a hammer called Mjolnir, which might have meant lightning at some point. Among other items, he was said to have a belt that increased his strength, as well as iron gauntlets that allowed him to wield Mjolnir, which was supposedly really hot, and a chariot that was drawn by two goats. Liked by Icelandic peasants, which was in contrast with Vikings who preferred Odin, he was the protector against frost giants and scourge of evil. The only thing that stopped him was the miscalf, which left him so frightened that it took his three-year-old son, Magni, to rescue him. His wife was the giantess Yarnsaxa, and his servants were Tialfi and Roskla. Among the many other gods and goddesses, there was Tyr, as mentioned above, who was the god of war and possibly an early sky deity. He shares a possible connection with the Celtic god Nuada, as both lost a hand. The Anglo-Saxons called him Tu, and it is from him that we get Tuesday, which he shares with Mars. There was Freya and Freyr, twin deities. Freya was the goddess of sex, fertility, war, and wealth, while Freyr was the god of weather and fertility. Like Odin, Freya had a following of the heroic dead, while her brother was one of the three principal deities, the others being Thor and Odin. Freya had many admirers and was accused of sleeping around. Her brother, because of his statue in a temple in Uppsala, Sweden, that depicted him with a large penis, was confused for Priapus, the son of Dionysus, by the Romans. Both have magic items. Freyr had a collapsible ship called Skidbladner, while his sister had a necklace called Brising, which she obtained by sleeping with its maker. One final thing to point out are the Norns, who were often described as three sisters. Called Weird by the Anglo-Saxons, these were Germanic fates who once guarded the well of Urd at the base of Ingersoll, the great cosmic tree that connected the nine worlds. These were goddesses of fate, who decided the outcome of the rest of the gods and goddesses, as well as dwarves, elves, and humans. Belief in them continued long after the arrival of Christianity, and traces of them can be found in Macbeth. They are paralleled to the Moire, or fates, in Greek mythology, but unlike the Greek fates, they did not spin lengths of yarn to measure a mortal's life. Before moving on to discuss Ragnarok, the doom of the gods and of the world, it should be noted that in the Norse religion, there was a held a belief that there were nine worlds. They were Asgard, the land of the gods, Alfheim, the land of the elves, Vanaheim, the land of the Vanir, who were the older branch of the deities and primarily gods and goddesses of fertility. Midgard was said to be the land of men, Jotunheim was the land where the giants resided, Svartalfheim was the land of the dark elves, for the dwarves there was Nidovelir, Muspelheim was a southern region of fire, and Niflheim was the land of the dead. Connecting the land of the gods and the land of men was Bifrost flaming three-stamp bridge that was said to be guarded by Heimdall and built out of red fire, green water, and blue air. Each day the gods would ride across it to hold meetings at the well of Urd. As to why the above information could be important, one can look at the deities of the Norse polytheistic religion and see an explanation on what the people of Norway possibly viewed as important. In this case, as natives of a cold land, it can be seen that population was of great importance as numerous gods and goddesses of this religion were fertility deities, and that weather also played an element. Among many examples, one could simply look at Thor and Odin, who were represented by thunder and lightning or the frost giants, who were often depicted plaguing Asgard or Midgard. Shifting